We are live. Welcome to Obi-Wan Kenobi Episode 6 Thoughts. So this is the finale or season 1 finale if they do decide to make another season. Okay, so this episode does show the Imperial Star Destroyer gunning for the transport ship. So that does help with one of the issues that some of us had. And, yeah, Obi-Wan is going to distract Vader from the others because he can't just split his forces, go after both. Squirrel! Squirrel! And we see that Reva is on her way. Haja talks to Leia, helping Ben. I like it. And Ben gives Leia a holster for a blaster. It's apparently Tala's, but not a blaster because she's ten. And Ben tries to contact Qui-Gon, still doesn't work. I like that the Master Inquisitor stands up to Vader, which apparently is something, you know, on the animated show, you know, there is some hostility. And Owen tells Luke that it's Tuscans, not Inquisitors. So a, mini min so a minority group is being blamed for the actions of a fascist government. Points for accuracy. Very well done duel between Vader and Obi-Wan. And wow, I did not expect Vader to bury Ben alive. That is dark. And some more fighting when he escapes. Very tense with Reva on the farm. Despite the fact that we know all three of them are going to survive. And Obi-Wan throws a bunch of rocks at Vader. I appreciate that this is one of the things that remembers that, like... In the original trilogy, when they would throw things, they would throw a lot of things. You know, with the, the release of the prequels, it would be, oh, they'll throw one thing for a very targeted attack. And then that carried over to the games. You know, if you play, as I've got right back there, the, you know, Jedi Knight, Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight, yeah, you know, if you use Force Throw, I think it's called the Dark Side ability, you'll throw a bunch of objects, not just one. Very emotional when part of the mask gets destroyed, and, you know, Hayden Christensen's voice comes through, and we see his eye and part of his face. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. So... That's what Ben meant when he told Luke from a certain point of view. Okay, fair enough. Now I sympathize with Ben. We all know the situation where two people refuse to talk directly to each other, so they passive-aggressively use a third person who's really uncomfortable repeating what they say. That was Ben. Ouch. And Reva wanted revenge by killing Luke, ends up not being able to do it, so she carries him back. She and Obi want talk. Good scene. I do, you know... It would have been nice if the reason she didn't kill this innocent child wasn't that she saw herself in that position, but yeah. And, you know, it's also this thing of, like, I mean, how many Jedi has she killed in order to get to Vader? And, yeah, it's, yeah. I, I recommend um, Sean Chandler Talks Movies. He did... A review specifically of this episode and he did a video I think it's called something like Obi-Wan Kenobi was a massive disappointment something like that where he talks about the overall show both are excellent videos Ian McDermott makes a cameo as the Emperor very cool the Imperial March plays and he just I mean he can do this role in his sleep by now and just yeah it's always good to see him Leia puts the holster on. Her mother says she loves it after it at first looks like she's going to tell her it's unacceptable. And Leia agrees to be more of an ambassador as long as things change. Jimmy Smith agrees. More Ben and Leia. And he tells her what she has from both of her parents. I like that. Will I ever see you again? Going by a new hope. Nearly. And Ben gets to go hello there to Luke. With Reva and Luke, they did manage to keep the canon intact, but it was kind of awkward still. Not Star Trek Enterprise awkward, but awkward. And Qui-Gon makes an appearance right at the end. And yeah, you know, he sounds like Qui-Gon. It's 
been a minute since he played Thor. Did he do a voiceover for Rise of Skywalker? Who cares? He did do a voice part for, I want to say, it was either Attack of the Clones or the Revenge of the Sith. But this is the first time we've seen him do it, like, a physical role since the uh, Phantom Menace. So, yeah. And that brings me nicely to, I want to say it was Full Fat Videos that did a, you know, I, th I think he... His video is something like, I am done with Star Wars or something like that. Which, I, I I don't go that far, but I can understand what he means. And, yeah, he has issues with Qui-Gon's appearance. And I'm just going to direct you to his video, because it's really good. And I would just be, you know, paraphrasing what he said, so, yeah. I'm glad Reva survived and stopped herself. I'd like to see her return, see her further journey. Now, I do have a couple of rewrite suggestions for the finale. I think they should have left Tala alive, which I realize she didn't die in the finale, but Reva should have been trying to kill her, not Luke or someone else we already know survives. Tala talks down Reva by pointing out both of them used to be Imperial and now no longer are. That both of them have been hurt by the Empire. That both of them want to fight the Empire however they can. And maybe this could be... You know, this could lead into a spin-off show focusing on the two of them. Tala trying to convince Reva to use less violence, more stealth. To focus less on killing Imperials, more on protecting rebels and for sensitive people. I think there were definitely some great things in the show, but yeah, you know, if I, uh, I think it was Nerdsoup who suggested, suggested the show should have been about Vader and the Inquisitors going around trying to kill Jedi, that that would have been more compelling, and I would say that's one option, another is that it's about Obi-Wan, you know, going around trying to protect Force-sensitive people, and this kind of thing of, like, we see how it hurts him. Like, he, he knows he has to do it, and it's the right thing to do, but it hurts because, you know, the, he was there. He was one of the Jedi that, you know, he was on the Jedi Council when the Jedi had the power before the fall, before the Empire. And, yeah, you know, every single Force-sensitive child he sees, that could have been a youngling. They could have been raised in relative safety it's not exactly completely safe at the jedi academy but you know every so often you'll have a, a jedi going bad going around sabering younglings apparently so you know we all remember that part of revenge of the sith where he goes into the room of younglings that one youngling asks what are we going to do and he ignites his lightsaber and the kid like takes a step back like scared you know in the actual scene you know obviously it doesn't look the way it looks to us with post-production when he ignites a lightsaber so he had to do something to get that reaction from the kid and apparently Hayden Christensen went boo and the kid was like that's that's I yeah that's great I really like that anecdote now let's see. It, yeah, and, and, you know, Vader and the Inquisitors going around trying to kill Jedi, you could have had Jedi that were on the animated shows that we don't know if they survive this, you know, time period. You could have introduced new Jedi, and it would, you know, I mean, Darth Vader does get to do some cool stuff on this show, but if he didn't fight Obi-Wan, which, you know, that's cool. What else does he do? Like, he he uses Reva, but ultimately, I mean, they didn't... What did they really get out of using Reva? Uh, Tala's dead. I think some other people did die at the, the siege situation. But yeah, ultimately, the Force-sensitive people escaped. That's, that's another thing. Like, the Force-sensitive... That whole plot line, you could remove it, and you wouldn't really, like... Yeah, the, the, you know, the stuff I thought really worked. 
since I won't be saying this in the review itself, since, you know, arguably spoilery, I really liked Leia. I acknowledge that the, you know, the writing isn't always completely consistent. I thought her acting was great. And yeah, I hope to see more Leia, you know, uh, maybe, maybe a 18 year old Leia or something. And yeah, you know, there is some chance that that was what they were doing. They were seeing, do people like Child Leia? Maybe we can give, uh, you know, yeah. I didn't think she needed to be captured and re uh, rescued twice. I didn't think she, they, they didn't really have anything to give her to do after the second rescue. Like, oh, she crawls around in a vent, you know, like... You could have had a droid do the same thing. You know, it's it's not some... That's, you don't need Leia to do that, you know. It was great when we saw how tough she was, even at age 10. How she stands up for, you know, lower life forms, droids. You know, we, we see the... the You know, we can see who how she's going to become this, you know, awesome character. I thought Ewan McGregor's acting, especially when it's just his face, when he's not really saying anything, that that always sounds like such an insult. He does well at delivering lines as well. But like when he's watching over Luke and we see his, his face, all the emotion on there, you know, I did think that, you know, Hayden Christensen, I, I liked the, the dual... You know, be, the flashback duel that was set before the events of Attack of the Clones, or at least before the end of Attack of the Clones, anyway. I liked Tala, I like Reva. Yeah, you know, there are things about the show that, you know, so I've seen some people, yeah, say that, you know, they, certainly at least by the end of the show, they, they absolutely hated it, and they thought it was a huge disappointment. I do still think there were some interesting things. I just wish they had been handled better. But there's, you know, there are things they can do with the character of Reva. And I do think that it, because, you know, here we have someone who was like very close to like inner circle kind of, you know, she probably knows stuff. You could have a show of her like, going around destroying Imperial facilities with some help, obviously, but yeah, you know, providing some some information. And maybe you could have like a, an Imperial realize it must be Reva. And they're like trying to do mind games with Reva. So we still have that kind of conflict, even as she does the you know, we didn't see her do that much to fight Imperial. She attacked Vader. That was it, you know. I think an entire show of her, you know, and, and maybe sometimes she crosses the line. Maybe sometimes she, you know, dips her toe in torture because that was what she was taught. And she hates the, the Empire now, you know, the, the you know, yeah. And, and someone else has to pull her back from the edge of sanity. And yeah, I, I think there's... I'm, I'm going to be recording the review after this video, so, yeah, by the end of that, I will have decided exactly what rating out of 10 I'll give to it, but, yeah. I guess some of the four sensitive children this later become students at Luke's Jedi Academy and either die at the hands of Kylo Ren or join him. Is that why they're here, to, to explain how they're still alive, how there are force sensitive youth that can be that's just kind of sad like you don't have to explain every single little thing and yeah like it just i i think the the force sensitive thing might have been some of the padding i'm guessing if this had been a two-hour movie it would basically have been just one a new hope retread instead of two since you know, yeah, one of the two Leia rescues, the more epic one, was easily the one from the Inquisitor base. Obviously, they should have done something 
different from the the you know three kids in a trench coat thing that was ridiculous but yeah you know you could have had something interesting there I th I may have mentioned this earlier but uh, I think Tala having to dive into like yeah maybe maybe you know er she used she she played pretended to still be an imperial to get into the base maybe she does the same to get back out and like you have like Reva hasn't gotten there yet but there are like stormtroopers and other imperial officers being like where are you going what is going on here you know and she like says i will have you all uh fired for insubordination and like a stormtrooper like raises his rifle and is about to and and she you know shoots him and you can tell from her face that it kills her to do so that it just she doesn't want to kill any anyone anymore kind of thing you know which actually i'm not entirely sure the characterization on this show was yeah she she killed them fairly you know but that's why i think that would have been more interesting is what i'm saying and yeah let's see i'm not sure i would necessarily say that either of the capture layer scenes were better than the other you know um dude from red hot chili peppers and his gang who can't capture a 10 year old without like running into tree branches and stuff and then you have reba just standing at the end of the court you know and other people have already pointed out how'd she get there before Leia did? Like, they they were in the same tunnel, and Reva entered it after Leia, so how, yeah, and, and, let's see, there was the, yeah, you know, we don't even see Leia be captured, like, is it, yeah. And, yeah, the entire movie would build up to just one confrontation between Darth Vader and Ben as the climax, which also has a proper escape scene, like, at the start of Empire Strikes Back. I could imagine that Luke doesn't figure into it at all. And, you know, gradually over the course of the entire movie, does Ben reconnect with the Force? And, you know, it's better handled that, you know. I liked all three of them, but I don't think this this show needed to have three rematches between Obi-Wan and Anakin, you know, you have the early one where Ben almost kind of refuses to fight at all, you have the flashback one, and then you have the one in this episode, which also just felt like you're kind of stretching this, we we didn't, you know, that might have been, you know, if it was uh, the climax of a movie, you know, it's, yeah, it, it felt, it's, it, it would have felt more, but a lot of the action on this show has been very quick and, and dirty kind of thing. It's, it's, you know, it hasn't been huge and cinematic the way that, so yeah, I'm thinking with the, with this last fight, they just went with the original script. And yeah, there were interesting ideas in there, although, you know, I talked to a friend of mine who's also a huge Star Wars fan, and he said that when Ben was under the rocks and he was like remembering, you know, stuff and hearing, you know, he was he was in his head. He was going back over the things that were said and such. You know, it reminded him of I would say it was like American Ninja or something, and it's like yikes. But yeah, I can kind of say, you know I didn't that wasn't where my mind went, but. I can see what he means, and that is, is yeah. I am hoping Andor is better. I think it will be. I think it has a stronger foundation. I think there are interesting stories to tell about Andor, that you know his life before the events of Rogue One. I don't know that there was that much interesting stuff to do here with with. Ben and Vader meeting up 10 years after and like I mean they have a really big dramatic fight and at the end of it you know Ben kind of accepts uh, my you know my friend is truly lost it's just like when 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 Ben realized that Anakin was still alive that was a big moment that was dramatic that was incredible 
and this is all that it led to. You know, they have a couple of confrontations, and that, like, the way they are at the end of this show, and the way they are at the end of Revenge of the Sith, for my taste, is just too similar. I, I think they, they should have done something different or just not had it at all. I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe Ben, maybe it ends with him fighting one of the Inquisitors instead. They brought in the Inquisitors and the only fight is Reva versus Vader and Vader is like, so, you know, he doesn't even bother drawing his own lightsaber because he views her as so inferior to him. So yeah, just, it seems like a waste. I, I think there's still a chance. I think if Reva shows up in something else, like the Mandalorian, I realize they'd have to like age her up some, although I guess it wouldn't be much more than the 10 years that are left between this show and A New Hope, since not much time passes between A New Hope and Return of the Jedi. There's some there's some training between Empire and Jedi, but little time passes between New Hope and Empire, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, I th yeah, I think there you could do something there, and I think there might be at least one other show that's set around that time that could, you know, if the, the racist you know, a-holes on Twitter can, like, chill for a minute and stop being, you know, garbage in the shape of human beings. Maybe Reva will get a spin-off show. You know, now that Tala's dead, Reva's basically the best thing, the, be the best new character to come out of this show. And, yeah, like I said, you know, Leia... Could they do adult Leia and Reva destroying Imperial facilities and Leia still has some optimism? She's not, you know, totally cynical and Reva is just like, she tries to just turn off her emotions and just be a machine for destroying. I think that could be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, with that said, those are all of my thoughts on this episode. So, fingers crossed that, that was a pathetic thing, finger crossed, that Andor is better, and or not worse. <laughs>